it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this super cute and very festive birthday confetti garland. This is a series of small and large circles and we've kind of mixed them all up and I've strung them onto some yarn. You can make this as long or as narrow as you like. I made mine a two strand one because I'm going to put mine across a window, but you can make this really long and go across a room or like a mantle or a mirror or anywhere where you want to add a little bit of fun and uh, some festive bright colors. Now we're going to learn how to make the smaller circle, which is about an inch and a half wide. And we're going to learn how to make this larger circle, which is about two and a half inches wide. This is done in just one round and the larger one is done in two rounds. At the end, we're going to assemble this together and kind of place everything um, as you see here. Now, as you may know, also Fiber Flux today is celebrating its 10 year anniversary, which I'm still in complete disbelief about, but I wanted to share a fun free pattern with all of you because that's how Fiber Flux got started as free patterns on my blog. So I thought a free pattern we would be the most fun uh, way to celebrate. So let's get started and make this fun garland together. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. We're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey. Um, I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. The yarn um, is pretty flexible for this project. I'm going to be using some um, yarn. You may recognize this from our temperature crochet along that we have going all year. This is um, some Red Heart Super Saver. And I just pulled some odds and ends um, of bright kind of festive colors um, that we might use for the little dots for our garland. But I have here, um, this is all Super Saver. I have grenadine, perfect pink, bright yellow, and minty. So we're gonna be making a variety of circles uh, using all the different colors of yarn. This is also a great project for scrap yarn. So if you have little odds and ends, one of these little circles, either the small or larger, takes really not a lot of yarn at all. You can experiment with using different yarn weights, different hook sizes, any little odds and ends you may have laying around too would be wonderful for this project. So when you're making your dots, you'll want to make sure you have lots of different colors so it really does look like confetti. And so I have made some um, large and small of each color really here, but I do feel like I need a few more of the bright pink. So I grabbed the bright pink yarn. We're going to learn how to make both this larger two round circle and this smaller one round circle together. And then we're going to kind of put it all together. So I'm going to grab my hook and my color that I'll be using and zoom way in so you can see the stitches. And we're going to make this small circle first. So what you want to do is to grab your yarn and we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop. Reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Next, we're going to chain four. We're going to be creating a ring that we'll work all of our stitches into. So we're going to uh, chain four. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to join in the farthest chain from our hook to create a ring. As a side note, if you prefer the magic ring, definitely do that if you feel more comfortable with that. So we're going to join with a slip stitch, so insert the hook into that farthest chain from the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop to the loop already on your hook, and then we can kind of open up our ring because we're going to be working some stitches into the center of this ring. We're also going to hold our tail along the edge as we work to help weave it in as we go. So what we want to do now is chain three. One, two, three. This chain three will count as one of our double crochets. So now into the center of the ring, we're going to work 11 double crochets to create our little circle, okay? So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring, and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so that was one double crochet, and we're going to do a total of 11. Okay, so that was one two, three, still holding the tail along the edge, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, and 11. Then what we're going to do to close our round is to go to that, remember that chain three at the beginning? Count three chains up and join with a slip stitch. So in that third chain up, insert the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And our circle is complete. So what you want to do now is grab your scissors and snip. Grab your project again, wrap your yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop. And then we're just going to do a quick little weaving. Um, so what you want to do is take that tail that you wove in as you went along, see how it's all woven in, pull it nice and tight, grab your scissors and snip. Then get your tapestry needle and you have one more uh, tail here. So thread your tapestry needle and you're going to flip it over to the back. The side that faced you as you worked is the front. The back um, is the side, it looks a little bit different, you can see. So we're going to take that tail and weave it along these back loops on the back side of our circle, okay? So I'm just going to go right in there, and you, if there's a little knot there, you might want to give it an extra little tug to sort of tuck that in a little bit more, okay? And our small circle is complete, okay? So now what we want to do is make our larger circle. Our larger circle starts the same way. It's basically this with an added round onto it, okay? So let's learn how to make the larger circle next. All right, so we're going to begin the same way, and I'm going to go through this first round a little quicker because we've just learned how to do it with the smaller circle. So once again, put a slip knot on your hook, and let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to chain four, same thing, one, two, three, and four, and then we're going to join in that farthest chain with a slip stitch to create the ring. Open up that ring. And we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Remember that counts as our double crochet. And then we're going to work 11 double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I'm still weaving that tail in as I go all around this round. Okay, once again, count three chains up one, two, three join with a slip stitch to close. So all that is what we've done so far. Super easy. All right, next we're going to work round two. So I like to kind of give this tail a tighten before I do that just to kind of like shape it all up. So what we want to do now is start round two. For round two we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then in that same stitch down at the base of that chain we're going to work a double crochet. Once again, that chain three we just did counts as a double crochet, okay? Hop over to the next stitch, and in that stitch, work two double crochet this time. One, and two, and we're going to do that in every stitch all the way around. So two double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch, and so forth, okay? I'm gonna keep working my two double crochets in each stitch all the way around and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round. All right, just coming up to the end of the round, I'm working my last two double crochets in that last stitch. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is join same way, one, two, three chains up, join with a slip stitch for that circle as well. Just like that. So then we can cut our yarn. And once again, we're going to flip it over to the back, trim our tail, and weave the outer tail in. Okay, so grab your tapestry needle again. We're going to weave that in. 
So make sure you're on the back versus the front. They'll look a little bit different, so you can tell. We're just going to weave that end in, just like that, okay? So our larger circle is done. Now, as you're planning your garland and the colors that you want to use and um, how you want it to be arranged, uh, what you want to do for the, the maximum confetti effect, if you will, you want to kind of mix sizes and colors up as much as possible. So let me zoom way out here so you can see what we have. And they just look so cute and fun. So what you want to do is pick a color for the strand. Now I'm going to have my circles. You, this is a kind of a design choice. Um, you can make as well, but you can either kind of spread your circles out and have a little string in between each one, or you can sort of have them uh, push together. So do you just decide if you want them to be kind of snug or if you want them to be like on a, on a string, more of like a stringed look, okay? So once you decide that, then uh, especially if you're letting the string show, you'll want to choose the color. I'm gonna do this mint color. It's nice and uh, uh, I have lots of it, so I can use that. Um, you wanna grab your needle and you wanna grab your scissors. Now, I have here a bunch of circles that I made. You can make a bunch more and stretch it across an entire room, or you can make sort of a smaller one to go over a window or a mirror or something like that. It's really up to you. You can just keep on going with your circles as long as you want to. Okay, so once you have all your circles, now I did, just to give you an idea, let's see here, I actually haven't counted them yet. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven large circles. And then I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve small circles. So if you want to make yours go across the room, you'll need lots of different circles. Um, I want to do kind of a double strand in a window. So I'm going to do like two kind of short strands, not, not super long. So I didn't do a ton of them, but I, I did want to make sure I had lots of colors mixed up and sizes mixed up. So then what you can do is grab a um, one of your yarn colors um, and then what we're going to do is use that to string them. So two different things you can do. It's really a personal design choice, however you like the look um, of yours, is to you can string them so that they're touching like this. So they're sort of like more snugged together like this. Or when you string them, you can pull them apart. So there's a little bit of string in between them. It's, it's really up to you. I'm gonna sort of snug mine together. The next thing you'll want to do is cut a piece of yarn, uh, the length of the garland that you would like to be, uh, that you would like it to be, um, with a few inches on either side for hanging, okay? You don't want it to be exactly the length. So I'm just gonna pull like a random piece Mine is going to be a little bit wider than the window I'll be putting mine in. And I'm going to do two strands. So what I like to do when I'm doing a garland like this is to, and let me just go ahead and pull my second strand just so I have it. Um, what I like to do um, is to lay everything out first and sort of plan everything, okay? So if I know I'm going to have two strands, let me slide all these down. I'm going to have two strands like this. What I can do is sort of lay them out and the window that I'm going to be putting mine in. And again, you can put these across a room. You can um, hang them across a wall, across a mirror, whatever you like, okay? So I'm going to kind of put my strands out like this and plan things a little bit. So I definitely want to mix up the colors that I will be using and the sizes and just make sure everything's, you know, nice and mixed up and sort of like how confetti falls, when it sort of falls in like a random pattern. And you wanna make sure you use all of your colors. And if you're doing two strands like me, you'll wanna make sure that you kind of move the colors, the same colors in the top and the bottom. You don't wanna have like all your yellow up top and all of your um, pink on one side, for example. Okay, so let's just kind of place these where we want them. And I'm liking the way this is looking. And you could do two small ones side by side. It's totally fine. Uh, let's move this one in. Put this yellow one here. And put this one here. Just, you might need to like play around with it a little bit and see what you like. 
And you'll also sort of want to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sort of uh, roughly just make sure if you're doing if you're doing two strands like me, make sure that they are about the same. Okay? So plan how you want everything laid out, and then what you can do is take your tapestry needle and start to thread them onto your little string. Now again, you can leave, have them spaced out so there's a string in between, or you can snug them up like I did, okay? So I'm gonna try and hopefully keep these in the same order. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle, and we're just gonna start threading them on. I'm gonna start down here and just sort of move my yarn through. Now, one little tip is when you're doing um, garlands like this and you're putting objects on them, one thing that can happen is if you go through the exact middle of it, it will tend to flop down, okay? So when you when you string each one of these circles, try to stay in this like upper part of your piece, okay? So what you're gonna do is take your circle, your first circle, whatever it is, how you laid it out, and flip it over to the back and see we're gonna stay in this top section and we're just gonna thread it or run our needle through the top or the back loops rather. Okay, see how I can't see the needle in the front? Let me zoom in and show you. See how I can't see the needle in the front there? I just have it in the back loops and it's in the top portion of the circle, okay? So I'm just gonna run my needle through and just sort of push it back. Then I'm gonna grab my next circle, I'm gonna flip it over, run it just in those back loops. We got a little bit of practice at this when we wove in the ends. Stay in that top section of our circle so it doesn't flop down. And we're gonna run our needle through. Again, you can have a little bit of string in between or you can push them together. And don't worry about it looking perfect right now. We're going to pretty this up when we get them all on our string. So the name of the game here is to just thread them on, make sure there's no needle showing, just give it a quick check before you pull it all the way through, and then just push them back. One thing I forgot to mention is when you lay these out and plan them, let me zoom back out. When you lay these out and plan them, make sure none of them are flipped over. You wanna make sure they're all facing upward because it will make a big difference. Now when you get to a big circle, same thing. Flip it over, make sure your needle is in that top portion of the circle so that it doesn't flop forward, okay? Now mine might be a little high. You can kind of play with it a little bit. And it is confetti. So if it's kind of, you know, it's going to look purposely random, <laughs> if you will. Okay? So just keep stringing these up. And then what we'll do when we return, we'll kind of straighten them all out and make them look a little bit nicer and neater. Okay, just strung that last one on there. And then what you'll want to do next is... Now, again, mine are short because they're gonna go across a window, but um, you'll wanna make sure, no matter how long or uh, spaced out they are, you'll want to just make sure they're all uh, nice and neat and straight. And then when you hang them, um, you might need to kind of arrange them a little bit too, but just make sure they're flat, none of them are overlapping or anything like that. And then I left enough on either end here that I can use to tie to the sides. You could use um, one of those hooks that are uh, like the removable kind that uh, don't leave marks or things like that, or you can hang it on a nail. Um, so our garland is complete. It looks beautiful and festive. And again, you can make this as large or small as you would like it to be. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlex video updates. Thanks again.